Okay, go. Go. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, Choices supporters, friends, community members. Um, welcome to the virtual tour of Choices' new comprehensive reproductive and sexual health center. Thank you for joining us on what would have been the night of condominium. Um, but we're not having condominium, obviously. Um, but we did want to give you a chance to see what our new comprehensive center looks like um, at this point. I will tell you, for one, um, our address is 1203 Poplar. So um, it is a Poplar facing building and that's the address, but the main entrance is uh, in the back and I'll show you that in a minute. I wanna thank, um, first of all, our development staff for being here, Darcy and Madison, at a safe, socially distanced um, away. Um, and I'm Katie Leppard. I'm the Director of External Affairs for Choices. Um, thank you for being here. I'm going to talk for a minute and give people um, some time to join us. Because um, I know there's a lot of curiosity in the community about what our center looks like, um, what it's going to provide. Um, while I'm standing here doing that, I will encourage you to, even though we're not having condominium today, we will have it. And we will have a grand opening for this center that's going to be the first in the nation to provide abortion and birth under the same roof. Um, buy tickets. Go ahead and buy your tickets now. You can do that online and come when we reschedule Condemonium in the fall. It's going to be a big party. It'll be here in the parking lot. You can have a tour of the center when it is finished. It's not finished now. Um, but we would love to have you and we would love for you to go ahead and, and purchase tickets. In addition to that, while we're waiting for people to join, I wanted to say um, a huge thank you to our attorneys at the Center for Reproductive Rights in New York and our partners in um, suing the state of Tennessee and the governor. And um, we won that suit yesterday and we are, will be performing aspiration abortions again. Um, and we're very excited about that. Um, I have been answering the phones here at Choices for the last several weeks as we have allowed our clinical staff to have some time off. And I have spoken with people from Texas who are looking at driving 11 hours to come and have this much needed procedure. I talked to a mother of a 15 year old on Tuesday last week who had been assaulted. Um, it is such a vital service that we provide that I've also talked to women who are having babies and who are terrified to have, give birth in a hospital. So the services that we are providing are really vital to our patients. Um, there is a donate button too on the Facebook Live. So if you, um, are moved and can support us. We are really working hard to serve our patients and to give our community the healthcare that they need. It's so important um, at this time. Um, you can also donate to the capital campaign and we'll talk about the naming opportunities and some other ways that you can support this revolutionary new center that will be opening in Memphis June 1st. We just got our first gift from Woola in Atlanta. Oh thank gosh, you so thank much. Thank you Woola in Atlanta for the first donation. Really appreciate that. Um, we're a nonprofit, and like every nonprofit, we're struggling to keep um, our to make ends meet right now, um, and serve our patients and keep our staff safe. All right, so let's move um, uh, to the front porch, and we'll walk in the main entrance of the new building. Oh wait! Before we do that, um, I want to point out the siding of our building. If you've driven down Poplar in the last couple of weeks, you I'm sure noticed it. It is hard to miss. Um, our architect for this building is Peter Warren of Warren Architecture, and we've been working with him for seven years <laughs> on this project. And he has been a steadfast supporter of choices in our work and our patients, and just a critical visionary in helping us design and think about what this building is gonna look like. And part of that is this quilt motif, which you will see in the windows, but also in the tiles of this different shades of green that are on the building. And um, it's kind of to represent a quilt, which we really felt like was you know different pieces that come together to make a strong comforting thing which really reminded me and reminded our, our team of like our patients they're all very different but they come together and they're so strong to get through the things that they get through and to do um, to come access the services that they do at choices so it's very southern it's very strong it represents comfort it represents strength through diversity and so when you drive by and see this beautiful green building think of a quilt and think of what choices represents to our community. Alright. Okay. So um I want to talk about the parking lot first, Madison. So okay. the um 
This building behind us is 144 North Bellevue, and it's a building that came available as we were designing this new center. And um, as some of you may or may not be aware, anti-abortion groups like to buy the building next to you and name it something really confusing like Choices East and protest from the parking lot and do other things confusing your patients. And so we were able to purchase that building from the owner for a good price. And so that is kind of a place right now where our midwives are working. But um, long term, once we're all moved into the new center, I'm not sure what it will be, but it will be part of this kind of Choices campus. And so the main entrance to this facility and these two buildings will be on Bellevue. So you will go down Poplar, um, headed west, you'll turn left on Bellevue at the light, and then you'll turn left into this parking lot and there'll be, you can park and come into this building or that building, um, depending on what you're doing. You will notice that it is very much under construction. So I want to personally thank S. Webster Haining, who has been our general contractor for this project. And again, you don't think about this if you don't work in, um, you know, a space that provides abortion care, but it can be difficult to find contractors, you know, people who will change your locks, people who are, will fix your glass windows, but it can be. But S. Webster Haining has been just a wonderful partner in making this happen. We're behind because of rain, mostly. Um, I don't know if you can think back about how many days of rain we've had in the last three months, but we've had a lot. And so um, the construction's a little bit behind and the virus has made a little bit of a dent, but um, we plan to be open June 1st and we're very excited about that. Um, and we're gonna tour the center as it is. Um, so this is the welcoming front porch and I wanna thank Dr. Thomas Ratliff who is a supporter of so many wonderful causes in Memphis and Choices is one of those. Um, and so he donated um, this beautiful welcoming front porch, which will be a place where patients can sit and wait to be seen. Um, there'll be benches out here, there'll be a big fan. It'll be a beautiful space when we have events for people to be. And so um, thank you, Dr. Ratliff, uh, for your generous support of choices. And um, this is the welcoming front porch. These big doors here will not be open on a daily basis. So this will not be where you'll enter the building um, as part of the public or as a patient. If we have an event, we can open them and it can be kind of an open, open and out space. But for um, most people, you will enter this small door here. And for patients, this is where you'll enter to come see our clinician. Okay. So this is um, the 24-hour vestibule. So obviously we'll have birthing people and people coming in at all hours. So this is our security office and we do have several security personnel that work for Choices. They will be here. When you come into this space, you'll check in with security first, make sure you're on the list, talk about what you're here for, and then the security guard will let you in through this kind of access control door. Loud. Yeah, I want to give one more plug to condominium. I'm having my five o'clock cocktail out of my um, condominium souvenir glass <laughs> that you two can have if you buy tickets to condominium and come in the fall. Um, so this is the main lobby and it's a nice big space. It will double as an event space. So the furniture in here we can move or rearrange so that we can show a documentary. There'll be a projector. Um, if we want to have something like that for the public, if we wanted to do some kind of education series or some panel discussion or something like that, we can use this space for those types of events. There's an elevator here, so to go up to the second floor, you can take the stairs or the elevator. Um, and then this is the front desk. So it's not decorated now, the finishes are not on, but I want to thank Natalie Lieberman, the uh, Collected Curate, who's our just fabulous interior designer, who has helped us create a feel that is not clinical, not medical. It's more hospitality, I think, is the vibe. It's more welcoming, you know, um, hotel, restaurant, spa type, yes, relax. And so um, this will be tiled beautifully and the colors are very neutral. But this is the front desk where patients will come in and check in with the front desk staff and then wait here or go up to the midwifery center to wait um, for the midwives. Also, on this wall here, the main wall in this lobby, um, Kirsten Williams, who's a local um, African-American artist, woman, she's done some things at Crosstown and all her, she has these beautiful, vibrant murals and she's going to do a mural for us very soon um, on that wall. And there's public bathrooms there. And then if you're a patient who's coming to the clinic for a wellness checkup or something like that, 
you will be called for the nurse. We'll call you from this door here. Do you have the lights come on automatically? Very exciting. Um, so if you look this way, this is the laboratory. It's a much bigger lab space than what we have currently in our building at 1726 Poplar. This is also the vitals area, so when you come in, most likely the first thing you'll do is have your blood drawn, your blood pressure taken, your weight done, and all those things. There's a bathroom there too. And then the laboratory is really big, so that if we want to do some more in-house labs, we can do that. Um, there's also some extra storage space there. And then here's kind of back behind the front desk. Um, there'll be a copier. This is a call room. We do a lot of patient callbacks with lab results, with making appointments and things like that. And so this room will be a door that you can close that people, you know, our MAs can make quiet phone calls back to um, patients. The front desk is also connected to the nurse's station. So we're kind of in the clinical area now. And these two areas of the clinic need to talk to each other. So what's happening at the front desk impacts the clinical staff and vice versa. So they're kind of connected in this new space. Um, there's an empty area here that'll be kind of a waiting area for staff. Once you've done your vitals and things like that, you might wait for a minute before you're taken back to your exam room. However, this, in the, in the space today at 1726 Poplar, we have two exam rooms. And that is the only space that we have to see patients. So we are working so hard to get all of our abortion patients through those two rooms. Um, in Tennessee, we are a forced 48-hour delay state in terms of accessing abortion care. So it's not a choices policy, it's a law that's been passed by politicians in Nashville. And so if someone needs an abortion, they have to come to two separate appointments that must be at least 48 hours apart. And there are things that they have to do at each of those appointments. So it's very difficult for us to see the volume of patients that need our services in our current space. So in this space, we have six exam rooms. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And they all have, here, let's do the light, please. <laughs> Lights come on automatically. Um, yeah, so this is one of the exam rooms. They're nice and big. We will see our patients here who are here for the abortion first day. We will see patients here who need hormone therapy, our transgender patients, we will see people who need pap smears and breast exams and IUDs and all the different things that we do. Um, we right now are having patients drive from so, so far away, for example, our transgender patients, who have a really difficult time finding a space and a provider that is caring and competent and sees them for who they are, and um, that's a population who drives from very far away. Obviously, right now, our abortion patients are driving from all over the South. So um, we're very excited to have this expanded capacity. Six exam rooms will give us so much more um, space and time to see all the patients who want to come see us, and it will decrease our wait times for patients. So we're very excited about that. All right. Laundry room. Okay. So we've come into kind of a separate area of the clinic back here. There are two larger rooms, so you can see this is much larger than the exam room. Um, these are procedure rooms, and these procedure rooms are where we will do the aspiration abortions. So if you're 11 weeks along or less, which sounds like a long time, but a lot of people don't even know they are pregnant until closer to 10 weeks. And so 11 weeks, you're getting very good. If you're 11 weeks or less, you can do a medication abortion, which involves taking a pill, here, taking a pill at home. You still have to do the 48 hour force delay. But um, aspiration abortions, which are farther than 11 weeks, very simple procedure, very short. But we do have these larger rooms that we can do those in. The other things that we might do in here later, and we haven't ironed this out yet, we're not doing it yet, but it would be great if we could do vasectomies here, we could figure out you know, a way to do that, um, oblations, um, other types of simpler outpatient procedures that we can do and use these rooms for that our community needs. We will add those at some point. Um, we also had a question on Facebook about um, whether or not we would be doing fertility services again. The answer to that is yes. Um, we lost our provider, who was our main um, provider of those services, but we'll bring those back in 2021. So look for that. We do very simple um, uh, sperm washing inseminations. Um, just general help with if you're having trouble getting pregnant, we can help you with that too. 
Um, so we'll bring those services back in 2021. The person who asked that. <laughs> this is the recovery room. So there are two procedure rooms. In the middle, there's sterilization. Um, there's a bathroom back here, and there will be five recovery chairs. Anytime you have an aspiration abortion, there's 15, 20 minutes of recovery time. Um, also, if you have an ID, IUD, there are many things that we do that, might, that we might just want to have someone sit and kind of recover for a minute before we um, send them home. So that's what this space is. Um, beautiful, peaceful, and quiet in our clinic now. It's sort of in the middle of everything, so it's lovely to have a designated um, recuperation space. Right. So we're going to go back to the lobby and go down the patient education hallway. that happens if you're an abortion patient at Choices is that on that first appointment you see a patient educator and that appoint that education session is about 15 minutes long it can be longer or shorter but most of what that session is about is to make sure that the person who's coming for abortion care is becoming coming because it's their choice it's, they've not had someone bring them a partner parent or anybody who's coerced them in any way um, to explain to them what the procedures about talk about financial aid if they need help paying for the procedure um, talk about birth control if they want to talk about it at that time um, and then also to schedule that second appointment so we have three patient education offices and we'll look at those in a minute um, we also have a big office here that's our um, clinic coordinator so she has a window you can't really see that from where you're at so that's okay yeah she has a window that <laughs> that looks out onto the lobby and the front desk and she kind of handles all of the front of the house coordination, patient issues, and things like that. So that's her space, and she can clearly see what's going on in her domain. Um, the other patient education offices are here. This is the Poplar entrance. So it's 1203 Poplar. There is an entrance, but we will not use that. It's, there's no parking, and it's just required to have since a Poplar address, but we will not use that entrance um, very much, if at all. Um, this is a little conference room um, that has a beautiful view of more tech, but I think we'll probably have curtains here. Um, but we will use this for board meetings, for smaller meetings that need to happen within staff, maybe some patient counseling. Um, this is a very flexible space, but it is right on Poplar and it's a beautiful view, so we'll see. <laughs> this is um, other patient education offices. So. So this is looking back through the lab and to the vitals area, which we just saw. And then this is some office space for clinicians, whoever needs to use it. And then there's also kind of a little staff break area. Um, you know, our, the main staff lounge is upstairs, and I'll show you that in a minute. But a lot of our clinic staff is down here, and they'll be down here most of the day. So we wanted them to have a space where they could get a cup of coffee, heat something up in the microwave, whatever. So this is kind of a little mini hospitality area for them. All right, so now we're going to go upstairs to the birthing center. All right, I think I'm gonna, we're going to go up the main public stairwell. Um, it's a little precarious, but don't worry, I do this in heels all the time. <laughs> and um, it opens up right onto the midwifery center. So. so picture this, beautiful, with art on the walls. Um, the donor wall will be here somewhere. So one of the ways that we raised money for this center, in addition to the big donors, was to do a Quilt of Courage campaign. And you can still purchase a square of the Quilt of Courage $1,500. That quilt, that representation will be somewhere as a piece of art in the building. Um, I encourage you to find that link on our website if you are interested in helping. Um, and there will also be like a beautiful hanging light fixture. This stairway will be beautiful when it's finished. We're going to go upstairs. Lights are working yet, but 
downstairs if you're a midwifery patient, the front desk will have let our midwives know that you're coming. And so they'll either meet you at the door or buzz you in, but this is an access controlled space. But you'll come up into this landing and there will be a lobby space with couches and things you can sit on. The elevator opens up here, so if somebody wants to take the elevator, they'll come out here. This side of the top floor is administration spaces and office space, and this side is the birthing center. So this space is called the family lounge or the family room. Think of when you're giving birth in this more natural way. Um, you might bring, we've had mothers who've had their aunties, their grandmothers, their um, whole families, their children. other children who come with them. And those folks might not want to be in the birthing suite while all the birth is happening and that they need a break and want to come out. This space, we'll think of it as like a giant living room. So it will have bookshelves and a television and living room furniture. It'll have a kitchen where you can cook, make family meals. So it really is kind of this family living room kitchen space where we hope our families who are here to support their birthing people um, can have a space to kind of rest and be here if the birthing process gets long. And then this is the midwifery center. So there's um, an idea that we really want to be a space where um, not only are we providing this really important care and new care to Memphis, uh, birthing center and um, offering an option for home versus hospital, a kind of different way to do things. We also want to create a space where we can um, provide midwives a place to train, um, get their experience that they need, and in particular with an eye to mid midwives of color. Um, so that's a very southern tradition, the black midwives, and our um, uh, director of perinatal care, who's Dr. Nakia Grayson, is very um, aware of that and wants to have this be a space where it could be almost like a um, training ground for black midwives who can come here and learn about what we're doing and then go out into the world and, and provide that care to people. So there are um, two offices here, which are the midwifery offices. There's a bathroom, there's some storage. And then this is kind of open space, it'll be flexible. We have several birth assistants. We have um, other midwives. Right now we have two. We've hired a third, we'd like to hire a fourth, and hopefully they will all be on staff by this summer. Um, and we'll really be able to ramp up the number of patients we can take. I know many of you have called because I've answered your calls, and right now we're not taking new patients for many reasons, but we have some current patients we're serving. Um, once the COVID virus um, crisis has calmed down and we have our full staff of midwives, um, we do hope to be taking new patients soon. But this is a flexible space where some of those birth assistants and other folks can work as well. So now we're going to walk down the hall and look at the birthing suites. kind of model the quilt panels on the outside, the green. Ooh, no. <laughs> so this is the hall, really the heart of the birthing center. And um, it's really just half of the upstairs, but there are three birthing suites and they all open onto this outdoor courtyard. So we're gonna walk in birthing suite number two and just look at it more closely. So all three of the birthing suites are laid out very, very similarly. Um, they will all have a birthing tub, so you can get a nice look at that. Um, each of the birthing suites has a birthing tub in the corner. It also has like a big queen-size bed with bookshelves. It looks like a bedroom. There's furniture in here. There's also equipment that is essential for a more natural home birth. So each birth suite will have hanging from the ceiling like a swing that you can hang on, bars that you can bend on, balls, all of the things um, that are necessary or useful when doing a more natural childbirth. Um, I want to thank, while we're here, in his donated birthing suite, um, Jimmy Humphreys, who's a fabulous um, Choices supporter, um, a supporter of many wonderful causes in Memphis, but he, um, this birthing suite is actually donated in his honor, um, and we really appreciate his donation and his support of our work in general. Um, we have two other ones, so if anyone else has someone in your life or is moved to donate in, in their honor, we'd love to have a birthing suite in um, your honor as well. And I want to just peek out to the courtyard real quick and show you this space. Oh, feels 
much better out here. <laughs> it does. So picture this as a green, I think of it as like the secret garden. It's out here in the middle of the top floor. Each of the birthing suites opens out onto it so that if you're in labor and you need some fresh air, want to be outside, want to be around some green, you can walk out here and be in labor. Um, it's going to be a lovely space for all of our birthing folks. Also, hopefully staff can enjoy it if it's not being used by someone who's in labor. Um, and if we have events, we'll enjoy it too. It will have large planters with tall things. Um, and I want to recognize while we're out here talking about that, our um, landscape architect firm, which is um, Plants Plus People, Stephanie and Chris Cosby, who've been wonderful, supportive, fabulous visionaries to help us create what this space will look like um, once it's finished. But there will be places where you can be and sit and get away and walk and be in labor. Um, and that's really a lovely option. I was not allowed to do that when I gave birth. <laughs> uh, also here, this is a... Um, a skylight so there will be natural light that will filter down from there onto the front desk so where we were when people were checking in um, that natural light you'll see is kind of a theme throughout the building it's important for us it creates a lightness um, and a loveliness of space which is important and so that will be done filtering onto the front desk thank you okay So we're going to see the last little bit of the birthing center and then we'll be on the administrative side of the building. So this room is one last midwifery office. Um, since we do have to have so many midwifery students and we have four midwives, although they don't spend a lot of time in their offices, they are seeing patients quite a bit. When you have a prenatal appointment, you might be seen in one of the birthing suites if they're not being used. Or in one of the two midwifery offices we looked at earlier, this is just another space that we can use to see patients um, if they come in and we need a space to have that appointment. It's a lovely view out of you see of Mortet. Beautiful college, Magnolia's beautiful view from here. Okay. This is the last birthing suite. This is the laundry for the um, birthday center. There's clean linen in the soiled linen room. This is the uh, other stairwell. This will not, I don't think, be used as much by the public. I think this will be more of the way that staff come up and down when they're working downstairs and need to come up to see one of our midwives or come up to see someone in the administration. Um, but it kind of mirrors the, it's not as, won't be probably as pretty, but it'll be in the back stairwell. This space is, um, we're calling it the multi-purpose room. Um, it's really, the idea is that we are probably going to have things that we're going to want to provide to our patients. Um, prenatal yoga classes, breastfeeding classes, um, post-abortion support groups, lots of things like that that are needed by our community, and this space will provide a place for us to do that. It'll have very flexible furniture that can move. Um, it's a nice big space, and we can have big meetings here. Um, multi-purpose room. All right, this is the staff break room, so the large staff lounge. Choices has about almost 30 full-time employees. Um, and everybody's not here every day, but um, we have a lot of people working here, and we need a space where people can come and sit, so there'll be tables and chairs, they can eat lunch here, they can eat lunch in the courtyard outside if they want to. Um, there'll be a, you know, a lot of amenities in here for staff to be able to take advantage of. A lot of the work that we do is very stressful, and we try to provide spaces and moments for our staff to regenerate and kind of um, have a moment to themselves so that they are taking care of themselves so that they can take care of our patients. So beautiful, light-filled staff. Um, so this is the administration hall. So there are offices here for the executive director. My office is here. Our development staff offices are here and so forth. Um, we're all up here together. I don't know if you're aware, but at this today and for the last two years or more, half of our staff has been at 1726 and a lot of us have been at 144 Bellevue, the building we saw across the parking lot. And when we're all here together on June 1st, it will be a very happy day for everyone. And this is where a lot of the staff that's either working remotely like right now or at 144 um, will be up here. 
this particular room is, we're calling it, um, I'm not sure if it has an official name, but it's a room particularly set aside for breastfeeding mothers. We do, um, especially in the last couple years, have had a lot of moms who have actually given birth naturally and at home with our midwives. Um, but this is a room where you can come to use the breast pump or breastfeed or um, just have for a moment staff. to yourselves. Yes, for staff. So this is a room for staff to have um, some self-care time or to breastfeed and do those things that, um, that parents need to do. Um, it could be named after you if, you if that's something that you are interested in and um, want to talk with us about. Um, please contact us because we'd love to have this in your honor. Um, so then we're going to walk just kind of down this space and there's offices on either side. You can show masks in their office. Kind of the same. But beautiful light and beautiful windows. That's me, I think. So this space is um, full of stuff right now, but it's actually set aside as flexible workspace. So our work has changed in the almost 10 years I've been here exponentially, and it changes from year to year. And so we were really aware when we designed this building that we wanted it to, to be flexible. We wanted it to be space that could change as we needed it. So this space in particular, we have so many volunteers, we have residents, we have people who come to do um, internships and research studies and we need a place for them to be able to be so this will be uh, a space where people can just pull up a chair plug in um, work from here if they're not like a full-time staff member or something like that so this is going to be very handy um, this final office is Rebecca Taro's office who our fearless leader and has been our executive director for these last over 10 years now um, and then next to her office is uh, this is a conference room and it's a conference room that will have zoom capabilities we do have funders from all over the US and we have um, meetings that we need to have especially now <laughs> uh, via zoom and so this will be a conference room a smaller one that has that capability um, this is the server room and I don't even go in there there's so much stuff. Um, do we have a question? Yeah. Thank you so much to everyone who is donating. I, um, again, I feel like since the COVID crisis has happened, I have spent more time interacting with patients than I typically do. Um, and their stories are varied and touching and their needs are essential and very important. And the work that we are doing is critical right now. And so your support um, is very important in making all that stuff happen. So thank you for those of you who are donating. Um, and I think we'll just go back, we'll hit the top of the stairs and then Darcy and Madison can tell me if I forgot to say anything. <laughs> and given yes thank you so much to everyone who's watched and given I just I I can't tell you how amazing it is that this center is going to open in Memphis Tennessee in the south and it'll be the first in the United States to do abortion and birth under the same roof and those two things are so essentially connected in the lives of our patients that providing them together is a benefit to our patients it's also a benefit to helping people in our community see how important all these things are and how integrated they are and how integrated they need to need to be. Um, so it's essential health care. We're providing it. We will continue to be here. We're very excited to have had this successful case um, with the judge on Friday and be able to go back to providing all the care that we were able to. Um, and we're going to be here. We're not going anywhere. Thanks to you and thanks to everybody's support. And come see us in the fall. Get your animal print out and buy tickets to Condemonium Call of the Wild. It will tell you the date when we know it. Um, be safe and thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>